There's another article I read once talking about what is so different about the males in female dominated positions. Is there anything different? But uh, that's, that's another topic. So as you can see, several areas are coded in societies as production for man. And several areas traditionally are coded as female. But the point is, there's lots of variations. And as I told you earlier in class, if you don't know something, first learn the variation. And that will explain everything. You don't need to have a theory to begin with. You'll develop a theory after you learn the variation. So learning the variations is terribly important. Any comments, questions? Korea is on this chart, by the way. Korea is the fifth, right here. Production tends to be almost even. It's slightly male, but in Korea, they're from the 1970s onward, it's a very female-led industrial work for the first time, too. Korea is this tiny little square. It's also this service, one of the higher compared to compared to Costa Rica and compared to Angola. <laughs> um, here's Korea again. Here's Korea again. Sort of middle. Almost all the countries code clerical as female, except slightly for once again. Uh, what is this? Then? Which one is that? Don? Managerial, mostly coded here. Here's Korea, definitely the most male dominated managerial culture. Um, I've seen statistics of how tiny <laughs> this is in Korea. And professional, just slightly male, maybe you know, point 0.2 compared to other. But some cultures, almost completely male dominated. So that's a fascinating analysis and uh, data. So, connect this to the environment. There's a space involved in all this. It's not exclusively gender in exactly the same kind of office, in exactly the same kind of building, exactly the same kind of access to services. So there is a tend to be an environmental stratification within this as well. I want to say one thing in general on page 130. What, what about women who are in the professional areas? What is special, if anything, about them? It is some statistics analyzing that. Of the two human capital variables, human capital is skills, as I said, one of the four different kinds of capital we talked about. Of the two human capital variables, women's labor force participation has the most occupation-specific effects. Increases in women's labor force participation are associated with increases in their representation in sales, service, and production, and decreases in women's representation in professional and managerial occupations. Did you hear that? What they're saying, if you read this more closely, is the more education women get, those societies actually sometimes become more stratified, um, and women are increasingly pushed into certain categories of work where in very poor labor states, professional labor states, very small, Bahrain, Kuwait, trained women are a high class commodity. So it doesn't matter. In fact, I have seen pictures of, I think, the stock markets in Kuwait or Bahrain, and it's staffed by women. It's not men selling. They're all women with the, the veil. Not complete veil, but veil conducting stock markets, taking calls, buying things. So you know, the classification of gender is not biologically determined. That's my point. It's culturally determined and politically determined as, as this uh, argument. The results are consistent with culling or selective recruitment. When few women are in the labor force, they're more likely to be better educated than the general population and have access to the higher prestige occupations. However, mass education doesn't always yield that effect within a culture. So the more scarce education is, it tends to be better for women. But the more mass-oriented, it tends to maintain or encourage, uh, statistically not required, but it tends to encourage the politics of coding certain jobs as female. 
that's just one of the several things this talks about. Comments? Question? A very interesting, very interesting to me. Uh, because it does start with variations. It doesn't start with a theory, it starts with variations and lets you think about all the different things that could happen to change gravitation. 